Ragnar Lodbrok was a legendary Viking hero, as well as a legendary Danish and Swedish king. He is known from Old Norse poetry of the Viking Age, Icelandic sagas, and near-contemporary chronicles. According to the traditional literature, Ragnar distinguished himself by conducting many raids against the British Isles and the Holy Roman Empire during the 9th century. He also appears in Norse legends, and according to the legendary saga's tale of Ragnar's sons and a saga about certain ancient kings, Ragnar Lodbrok's father was the legendary king of the Swedes, Sigurd Ring. Chapter 1, Accounts. Chapter 1 Section 1, The Icelandic Sagas. According to the tale of Ragnar Lodbrok, tale of Ragnar's sons, Heimskringla, Kervarar Saga of K. Haythrex, Sagubrote Efnok and Fornkonungum, and many other Icelandic sources, Ragnar was the son of the king of Sweden Sigurd Ring. Nearly all of the sagas agree that the Danish king Ranva was Sigurd's father, with the Hervarar saga citing his wife as Asa, the daughter of King Harald of the Red Moustache from Norway. The accounts further tell that Ranva was a grandson of the legendary Scandinavian king Ivar Vidfam by his daughter Ord. After the death of King Ivar Vidfam, Ord's eldest son by the Danish king Hroerik Ringslinger, Harald, conquered all of his grandfather's territory, and became known as Harald Wartooth. Harald's nephew Sigurd Ring became the chief king of Sweden after Ranva's death, presumably as the subking of Harald. Sigurd and Harald fought the Battle of the Brevella on the plains of Usterjutland, where Harald and many of his men died. Sigurd then ruled Sweden, and Denmark. He sired a son with the Princess Alfield of the petty kingdom of Alfheim, Ragnar Lodbrok, who succeeded him. Eystein Belly, who according to the Hervara saga was Harald Wartooth's son, ruled Sweden sometime after Sigurd until he was slain by the sons of Ragnar and Aslug. In their accounts of his reign, the sagas of Scandinavian prehistory, known as Fornaldarsoga tell more about Ragnar's marriages than about feats of warfare. According to the Sigubrot, he was the biggest and fairest of men that human eyes have seen, and he was like his mother in appearance and took after her kin. He first killed a giant snake that guarded the abode of the Jatish Jarl Hurth's daughter Thora Borga Hjort, thereby winning her as his wife. The unusual protective clothes that Ragnar wore, when attacking the serpent, earned him the nickname Lodbrok. His sons with Thora were Eric and Agnar. After Thora died, he discovered Kroka, a woman of outstanding beauty and wisdom living with a poor peasant couple in Norway, and married her. This marriage resulted in the sons Ivar the Boneless, Bjorn Ironside, Vitserk, Ragnvald and Sigurd Snake in the Eye. Kroka was later revealed to actually be Auslug, a secret daughter of the renowned hero Sigurd Fafnesbun. As the sons grew up to become renowned warriors, Ragnar, not wishing to be outdone, resolved to conquer England with merely two ships. He was however defeated by superior English forces and was thrown into a snake pit to die in agony. The saga of Ragnar Lodbrok, tale of Ragnar's sons, and Heimskring all tell of the great heathen army that invaded England at around 866, led by the sons of Ragnar Lodbrok to wreak revenge against King Alla of Northumbria, who is told to have captured and executed Ragnar. Chapter 1 Section 2 Danish Sources the Chronicon Roskildens mentions Lodbrok as father to the utterly cruel Norse King Ewar and his brothers, Ingwer, Ubi, Bion, and Ulf, who rule the northern peoples. They call on the various Danish petty kings to help them ruin the realm of the Franks. Ewar successfully attacks the kingdoms of Britain, though not as an act of revenge as in the Icelandic sagas. The Chronicle of Svenagesson is the first Danish text that mentions the full name, Rignaris Lothbro. His son Sigurd invades Denmark and kills its king, whose daughter he marries as he takes over the throne. Their son in turn is Canute, ancestor of the later Danish kings. Neither of these sources mentions Ragnar Lodbrok as a Danish ruler. The first to do so is Saxo Grammaticus in his work Hester Danorum. This work mixes Norse legend with data about Danish history derived from the Chronicle of Adam of Bremen. Here Ragnar's father Sigurd Ring is a Norwegian prince married to a Danish princess, and different from the victor of Bravella. Sigurd Ring and his cousin and rival Ring are both killed in battle, whereupon Ragnar is elevated to the Danish kingship. His first deed is the defeat of the Swedish king Fro, who has killed Ragnar's grandfather. Ragnar is assisted in this by a ferocious shield maiden named Lagida, whom Ragnar forces to marry him. In this marriage he sires the son Fridleif and two daughters. Ragnar later repudiates his marriage to Lagida and marries Thora Borgahjort, a daughter of the Swedish king Hrothra, after killing two venomous giant snakes that guard Thora's residence. His sons with Thora are Radbar, Dunvat, Sigurd Snake in the Eye, Bjorn Ironside, Agnar and Ivar the Boneless. From a non-marital relationship with an unnamed woman, Ragnar fathered up. Another, final marriage, Tasvanag produces another three sons, Ragnvald, Erik Weatherhat, 
and Hitzirk got the sons were installed as sub-kings in various conquered territories. Ragnar led a Viking expedition to England and killed its king, Hamar, before killing the earls of Scotland and installing Sigurd Snake in the Eye and Radbar as governors. Norway was also subjugated, and Fridleif was made ruler there and in Orkney. Later on, Ragnar with three sons invaded Sweden where a new king called Saul had appeared and withheld the heritage of Thora's sons. Saul and his army were massacred and Bjorn Ironside was installed on the throne. Some time later Bjorn was put in charge of Norway, while Ragnar appointed another son, Eric Weatherhat, as ruler in Sweden, he was subsequently killed by a certain Eystein. One of the sons, Ub, revolted against his father at the instigation of his maternal grandfather Esbjorn, and could only be defeated and captured with utmost effort. Saxo moreover tells of repeated expeditions to the British Isles, one of which cost the lives of Dunvat and Radbar. Allah, son of Hamar, with the help of allies known collectively as the Galley, possibly a group of Norse Gaels, expelled Ragnar's sub-ruler Ivar the Boneless from England and remained a persistent enemy. Finally, the Scythians were forced to accept Vitserk as their ruler. In the end Vitserk was treacherously captured by the Hellespontian prince Daxon and burnt alive with his own admission. Hearing this, Ragnar led an expedition to Kievan Rus and captured Daxon who was curiously spared and exiled. Unlike the Icelandic sources, Saxo's account of Ragnar Lodbrok's reign is largely a catalogue of successful Viking invasions over an enormous geographical area. Among the seaborne expeditions was one against the Bjarmians and Finns in the Arctic north. The Bjarmian use of magic spells caused foul weather and the sudden death of many Danish invaders, and the Finnish archers on skis turned out to be a formidable foe. Eventually these two tribes were put to flight and the Bajamian king was slain. The historical king Harold Clock is by Saxo made into another persistent enemy of Ragnar, who several times incited the Jutes and Scanians to rebel, but was regularly defeated. After the last victory over Harold, Ragnar learned that King Alla had massacred Ragnar's men on Ireland. Incensed, he attacked the English king with his fleet but was captured and thrown into the snake pit, similar to the Icelandic sagas. In spite of all his praise for Ragnar Lodbrok, Saxo also considers his fate as God's rightful vengeance for the contempt he had shown the Christian religion. Chapter 1 Section 3 Poetic and Epigraphic Sources While the narrative Norse sources date from the 12th and 13th centuries, there are also many older poems that mention him and his kin. The Ragnar's Drapper, ostensibly composed by Bragi Bodasson in the 9th century, praises a Ragnar, son of Sigurd, for a richly decorated shield that the poet has received. The shield depicts the assault on Jorman Wreck, the jarthening of Igtail, the ploughing of Jeffjon, and Thor's struggle with the Midgard serpent. Recent scholarship has suggested that the poem is in fact from circa 1000 and celebrates the Norse reconquest of England. The four tales depicted on the shield would then symbolize four aspects of the Lodbrok saga. The nutstrapper of Sigvat Thordeson mentions the death of Alla at the hands of Ivar in York, who carved the eagle on Ella's back. From this the story of the atrocious revenge of Lodbrok's sons already seems to be present. The reference to a blood eagle punishment has however been much debated by modern scholars. Another lay, Krakamal, put in the mouth of the dying Ragnar in the snake pit, recounts the exploits of Ragnar and mentions battles over a wide geographical area, several relating to the British Isles. The poem's name, Crocker's Lay, alludes to Ragnar's wife's Crocker, though modern philologists commonly date it to the 12th century in its present form. There is one runic inscription mentioning Lodbrok, carved on the prehistorical tumulus of Maisho on Orkney in the early 12th century. It reads, This how was built a long time before Lodbrok's. Her sons, they were bold, scarcely ever were there such tall men of their hands. The expression her sons has given rise to the theory that Lodbrok was originally thought of as a woman, mother of the historically known sons. Chapter 1 Section 4 Frankish Accounts of a 9th century Viking leader named Ragnar The siege of Paris and the sack of Paris of 845 was the culmination of a Viking invasion of the Kingdom of the West Franks. The Viking forces were led by a Norse chieftain named Regin Herus, or Ragnar. This Ragnar has often been tentatively identified with the legendary saga figure Ragnar Lodbrok, but the accuracy of this is disputed by historians. Ragnar Lodbrok is also sometimes identified with a Ragnar, who was awarded land in Torhout, Flanders, by Charles the Bald in about 841 but eventually lost the land as well as the favor of the king. Ragnar's Vikings raided Rouen on their way up the Seine in 845 and in response to the invasion, determined not to let the royal abbey of Saint-Denis be destroyed, Charles assembled an army which he divided into two parts, one for each side of the river. 
Ragnar attacked and defeated one of the divisions of the smaller Frankish army, took 111 of their men as prisoners and hanged them on an island on the Seine to honor the Norse god Odin, as well as to incite terror in the remaining Frankish forces. Ragnar's fleet made it back to his overlord, the Danish king Horik I, but Ragnar soon died from a violent illness that also spread in Denmark. Chapter 1 Section 5, Later Continental Accounts among the oldest texts to mention the name Lodbrok is the Norman history of William of Jumages from circa 1070. According to William, the Danish kings of old had the custom to expel the younger sons from the kingdom to have them out of the way. It was during the time this practice was in fashion that King Lodbrok succeeded his unnamed father on the Danish throne. After gaining power he honored the said custom and ordered his junior son Bjorn Ironside to leave his realm. Bjorn thus left Denmark with a considerable fleet and started to ravage in West Francia and later the Mediterranean. Roughly contemporary with William is Adam of Bremen whose history of the Archbishopric of Hamburg Bremen contains many traditions about Viking Age Scandinavia. In a passage referring to the Viking raids of the late 9th century, he mentions the Danish or Norse pirates Horic, Orwig, Gataffrid, Rudolf and Ingwer. This Ivar is in particular seen as a cruel persecutor of Christians, and a son of Lodbrok. Chapter 1 Section 6, Anglo-Saxon and Irish Accounts of the Father of Ivar and Halfton. According to the contemporary Anglo-Saxon chronicle and Asser's Life of Alfred, in 878 the brother of Hingwar and Hilfdin, with a naval fleet, a contingent of the great heathen army invaded Devon in England and fought the Battle of Cunwit. There the Vikings lost, their king slain and many dead, with few escaping to their ships. After the battle the Saxons took great plunder, and among other things the banner called Raven. The early 12th century annals of St. Neots further state that they say that the three sisters of Hingwar and Hubba, daughters of Lodbrok, wove that flag and got it ready in one day. They say, moreover, that in every battle, wherever the flag went before them, if they were to gain the victory a live crow would appear flying on the middle of the flag, but if they were doomed to be defeated it would hang down motionless, and this was often proved to be so. This is among the earlier references to the legendary hero Ragnar Lodbrok. The Irish Coggart Gaelil Regaliab from the 12th century, with information deriving from earlier annals, mentions King Halfton under the name Mac Ragnail. The form Ragnall may refer to either Ragnvald or Ragnar, and the entry is a strong indication that the name of Ivar's and Halfton's father was really Ragnar or a similar name. The early 11th century Three Fragments contains a passage that gives a semi-legendary background to the capture of York by the Vikings in 866. The two younger sons of Halfton, King of Lochlan, expelled the eldest son Ragnall who sailed to the Orkney Islands with his three sons and settled there. Two of the sons later raided the English and Franks, proceeding to plunder in the Mediterranean. One of them learned from a vision that Ragnall had fought a battle where the third son had been slain, and in which he himself had most likely perished. The two Viking sons then returned home with a lot of dark-skinned captives. It has been hypothesized that this is an Irish version of Ragnar Lodbrok's saga, the Mediterranean expedition being a historical event taking place in 859-61. Chapter 2, Ragnar's Sons The great heathen army is said to have been led by the sons of Ragnar Lodbrok, to wreak revenge against King Alla of Northumbria, who had previously executed Ragnar by casting him into a pit full of venomous snakes. Among the organizers were at least some of the brothers, Ivar the Boneless, Uber, Halfton, Bjorn Ironside, Hitzirk, and Sigurd Snake in the Eye, all of which are known as historical figures, save the slightly more dubious Hitzirk. Ivar the Boneless was the leader of the great heathen army from 865 to 870, but he disappears from English historical accounts after 870. The Anglo-Saxon chronicler Ethelverd records Ivar's death as 870. Halfton Ragnarsson became the leader of the great heathen army in about 870 and he led it in an invasion of Wessex. A great number of Viking warriors arrived from Scandinavia, as part of the Great Summer Army, led by King Bagsik of Denmark, bolstering the ranks of Halfdan's army. According to the Anglo Saxon Chronicle, the Danes battled the West Saxons nine times, including the Battle of Ashdown on 8 January 871, where Bagsik was killed. Halfdan accepted a truce from the future Alfred the Great, newly crowned King of Wessex. After Bagsik's death, Halfdan was the only remaining king of the invading host. He may also have been a king of part of Denmark, since a co-ruler Halfdan is mentioned in Frankish sources in 873. According to late sagas Bjorn Ironside became king of Sweden and Uppsala, although this presents chronological inconsistencies. Bjorn had two sons, Erik and Hefiel Björnsson. His son Erik became the next king of Sweden, and was succeeded in turn by Erik Refilsson, the son of Hefiel. 
Sigurd Snake in the Eye is perhaps the same person as Siegfried, brother of Halfdan, who was king in Denmark together with Halfdan in 873. According to the sagas Sigurd became king of Zealand, Skona, and the Lesser Danish Isles. Siegfried Sigurd possibly succeeded his brother Halfdan as king of entire Denmark in about 877, and maybe the Viking king Siegfried who was killed in West Francia in 887. Chapter 3, Sources and Historical Accuracy Whereas Ragnar's son Zivar the Boneless, Halfdan Ragnarsson, Bjorn Ironside, Urban Sigurd Snake in the eye are historical figures, opinion regarding their father is divided. Contemporary academia regards most of the stories about him to be fiction. According to Hilda Ellis Davidson, writing in 1979, certain scholars in recent years have come to accept at least part of Ragnar's story as based on historical fact. The most significant medieval sources that mention Ragnar include Book 9 of the Hesta Danorum, a 12th century work by the Christian Danish chronicler Saxo Grammaticus. The Tale of Ragnar's Sons, a legendary saga. The Tale of Ragnar Lodbrok, another saga, a sequel to the Volsunga saga. The Ragnar's Rapper, a skaldic poem of which only fragments remain, attributed to the 9th century poet Bragi Bodasson. The Krakamal, Ragnar's Death Song, an old and mysterious skaldic poem in her commentary on Saxo's Hester Danorum, Davidson notes that Saxo's coverage of Ragnar's legend in Book 9 of the Hester appears to be an attempt to consolidate many of the confusing and contradictory events and stories known to the chronicler into the reign of one king, Ragnar. That is why many acts ascribed to Ragnar in the Hester can be associated, through other sources, with various figures, some of whom are more historically tenable. The candidates, scholars like to associate with the historical Ragnar include the Regin Heres or Ragnar who besieged Paris in 845, the Danish king Horik I, King Reginfred, a king who ruled part of Denmark in tandem with his brother Harald Klock, but was expelled by Horik I and his brothers and later fell in a battle against them. Possibly the Ragnar of the Irish Annals attempts to reliably associate the legendary Ragnar with one or several of those men have failed because of the difficulty in reconciling the various accounts and their chronology. But the tradition of a Viking hero named Ragnar who wreaked havoc in mid-9th century Europe, and who fathered many famous sons is remarkably persistent, and some aspects of it are strengthened by relatively reliable sources, such as Irish historical tradition and, indirectly, the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. Chapter 4, In Literature and Media Ragnar Lodbrok features prominently in the following works. Edwin Atherston's 1830 novel Sea Kings in England. Edison Marshall's 1951 novel The Viking. Ragnar the Viking, a 1955 comic book feature written by Jean Olivier with art by Eduardo Teixeira Coelho, that ran in the French Valiant magazine up to 1969. Richard Parker's 1957 historical novel The Sword of Ganelon explores the character of Ragnar, his sons, and Viking raiding culture. The 1958 film The Vikings based on Marshall's novel, in which Ragnar, played by Ernest Borgnine, is captured by King Alla and cast into a pit of wolves, a son named Einar, played by Kirk Douglas, vows revenge and conquers Northumbria with help from half-brother Eric, who also had much to avenge upon King Isla. Harry Harrison's 1993 alternative history novel The Hammer and the Cross depicts Ragnar being shipwrecked, captured and executed, as well as his son's revenge. History's 2013 TV series Vikings features Australian actor Travis Fimmel playing the lead character of Ragnar for the first four seasons. The 2020 release of Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed, Valhalla features Ragnar's children continuing to reign, plunder, and settle eastern England during the 9th century. The 14th of June 2021 episode of Epic Rap, Battles of History, features the legendary Viking King Ragnar Lodbrok, played by Epic Lloyd, based on the TV series Vikings Battle Against Medieval English Monarch Richard the Lionheart, played by Nice Peter.